And I know you've all been waiting for this one. Let's talk about the science station. This was Spock's domain, and for Leonard Nimoy, the flight manual was a gift. In the original series, he often improvised what he was looking at, glancing into the iconic hooded viewer or pressing blinking colored lights, but Phase Two's manual codified the procedure. It explained with diagrams what each part of the science console was supposed to represent. The upper scope banks, for example, were labeled in the manual as being used for long-range stellar cartography and sensor fusion. Production originally planned to achieve this effect by inserting backlit transparencies into the viewer. But the manual doesn't just stop at visuals. It also, as before, created a button choreography. If the script called for Spock to conduct a long-range scan, Nimoy would press the leftmost toggle on the science panel before leaning into the viewer. If he was analyzing lifeform readings, the manual would instruct him to touch the second toggle from the right. Even if the audience never noticed this, the consistency would have given Nimoy a more reliable physical vocabulary for his role. Now, the document also included notes for some practical controls, switches that were actually wired to respond. We'd seen these before. These were real touch-sensitive pads located just before the viewer. When pressed, they would illuminate briefly, giving Nimoy real feedback during filming. This was critical because Spock's character demanded precision. Nimoy didn't want to look like he was randomly fiddling with lights. He wanted to embody the calm, exacting nature of a Vulcan science officer. If the actor pressed a control for sensor scan, an offset operator would trigger a blinking series of lights in the overhead display. The illusion was that Spock was commanding an actual process, but in truth, it was an orchestrated dance between actor and crew. The collaboration, anchored in the manual, of course, foreshadowed how Trek would later approach Starfleet technology as a carefully rehearsed system. Navigation was separated clearly from the helm in the original Phase Two designs, and the manual reinforced this by detailing how the navigator and helmsman were supposed to interact. Sulu and Chekhov often overlapped duties, with one setting a course and the other executing it. But the Phase Two manual formalized the process, 